We are saying the parasitic relationship that these Western countries have with African countries has got to come to an end. We are simply saying we do not need aid. We need trade. They must come to Africa, treat us with respect, treat us as equals. You take, for example, Niger is selling its uranium to France for 80 cents a kilo when the rest of the Western countries are buying the same uranium at 200 dollars, 200 euros per kilo. Hello everybody, welcome once again to AfriPost. I believe wherever you're watching us from, you're doing great. The EU has different programs that it is handling between its member countries and Africa. And this engagement has been questioned by many people who support the Pan-Africanist agenda. One EU member of parliament, Margot Parker, has been very vocal about focusing on issues that benefit EU and focusing on the issues that affect Africa as it were. Because if you look at the manner in which the aid is brought to Africa, much of it is brought in the guise of a eliminating poverty and supporting the needy. But in many aspects, the aid that Europe brings to Africa is aimed at meeting specific objectives, especially getting to its interests in our continent. I want us to watch this video where Margot Parker spoke about the hypocrisy in the aid that EU brings to Africa. And then also listen to one African lady, Arikana Chihombori Kwao, where she's saying that Africa does not need aid but Africa needs trade. Let us watch this video and then react to it after the video. Kindly watch. Foreign aid should be about helping a country that is not as well off as our own through the use of providing them with medicines, schools and the equipment to have clean water and to grow their own food. This way, developing nations do not have to rely on aid from developed countries continuously as they will have the tools to grow their own country without the unwanted influence of the European Union and their vanity projects. Overseas aid can be good if used properly in the short term, but it does not help developing nations out of poverty in the long term. The only way that this can be achieved is by removing barriers to trade rather than giving aid handouts. If handouts are continuously given, then this will lead to corrupt leaders purposefully obstructing economic growth within their country, which will lead to a total misuse of British taxpayers' funds. We should not be using development aid funds to further the EU's expansionist policies by influencing political participation in governments. This is not acceptable. And this is one of the reasons why the United Kingdom voted to leave the EU. We're saying the parasitic relationship that these Western countries have with African countries has got to come to an end. We are simply saying we do not need aid. We need trade. They must come to Africa, treat us with respect, treat us as equals. You take, for example, Niger is selling its uranium to France for 80 cents a kilo, when the rest of the Western countries are buying the same uranium at $200, 200 euros per kilo. It is amazing, over 99% of the value of their uranium is going to France and other Western nations. Value that should be coming to Niger. That is wrong. It is, it is slavery of the highest order. We're simply saying come to Africa and treat Africans fairly. Trade with the Africans fairly, just like you trade with other nations. And yes, sir, we need foreign direct investment. We need our Western allies. But our Western allies must understand Africans are humans too. Their needs are just as important as the needs of those citizens of the Western nations. Ambassador, we're talking a lot about France, in part because these coups and the changes in government are happening in all the countries that were part of the French colonial history uh, in Africa and that whole story. But, you know, some of the other big players in the world may be complicit in some of this as well. Uh, and I'm interested in your thoughts on the United States and how it gets it right, on Russia, on China, all of which are major players chasing these same minerals and same assets in Africa. Are you worried that some of the patterns and habits of the past are going to just be reinvented and that exploitation continue 
uh, with China, Russia, the United States, or do you see any of them doing it better than the others? I think now that they realize that they can no longer continue to exploit the African, I would advise all of them that this is again time, like I used in my last interview with you, that it's time for all of them to call for timeout if this was a basketball game. Now, to, I'm going to start with the United States. The United States is actually uh, in a very interesting position when it comes to their relationship with France. France is like a wounded um, uh, shark. France is like a wounded elephant. You know, like the going says, uh, when you are swimming with the sharks, when one starts to bleed, you get out of the water. My advice to the United States would be, France is bleeding really, really badly. France is wounded really, really badly when it comes to its relationships with, with Africa. So I would advise the United States to get out of the water, distance yourself from, from France, because you do not want the negative sentiment, really bad sentiment that the Africans have about France to bleed over to you, the United States, who I still feel that they are in a very good position to take a leading role in their relationships and trade relationships with Africa. So for, to the United, United States, I say, France is bleeding, get out of the water. To the rest of the other nations, they have already picked up and realized on it. China, for example, find China picked up on the mistakes that were being made by the Americans, the mistakes that were being made by the European nations, and China was coming into Africa realizing that, for example, when it comes to funding, European nations would talk and talk and talk about funding. They'll talk about building an airport. They'll talk about building a bridge. Ten years later, there is no bridge. There is no airport. It's still talk. All kinds of road, roadblocks and red tapes are put in in order to access funding. So China decided we'll make it easy for African countries to access funding. So that's why you'll find a lot of infrastructure projects are being built by China because they realize where the Americans, the Europeans, are dropping the ball and they are coming in with a different strategy. And therefore, it has been easier for China to woo the Africans to their side because they are doing things differently from what the Americans and the Europeans are doing. So to the United States, I say, look at the mistakes that France has made. Do something different. Revisit your American policy when it comes to Africa. And the United States still stands a very good position to win the Africans over, but this time win them the right way. Treat them fairly mm. and no more playing games, no more divide and conquer. Stay away from the local politics. You do not need to get involved. Let these African countries dog it all out, one child to the other. I like to say opposition parties, ruling parties, they are children of the same mother fighting for their breast milk. Let them fight for their mother, mother's breast milk alone without interference. So the U.S. is very good at interfering with electoral processes in Africa. That's a bad precedence because sooner or later everybody is figuring it out. Right. Then, then, then you become the enemy. So stop it. Stay right. out of local politics. To Russia, again, Russia is looking and saying, where is the West going wrong? They are coming in, they see a weakness. Russia came in during uh, the liberation wars in, um, in Southern Africa, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, um, Namibia, Mozambique, Angola, all those Af African countries that attained independence through, liber uh, through liberation wars. Z Ch Russia and China came in and realized that the Western world were on the wrong side of the equation. So they came in to say, if we're going to go and win these people over, let's support their struggles. Because truly, Russia came in to support these African nations when they really needed help. So you can't blame them. They found an opening and they, they supported a cause that was just, that was right, that was needed. And therefore, you see that Russia is being accepted because of what they have done in the past, historically. So people are not going to forget the friends that came in when they were needed. Right. It's, it's about taking, looking at what's going on. But when it's all said and done, we're saying to the world, no more can you continue to exploit the Africans. Right. The Africans, we have gone through centuries of being stupid, of being ignorant, of being dumb, of allowing the world to just piss all over us. Well, that's, that period is over. Africans are saying, we now know what is really going on. And if you truly want to be one, an African leader right. that's going to survive this revolution, you have to be an African leader that is anti-imperialism, 
an African leader that is anti-neocolonization, an African leader that's going to stand with the people in their pushback against the West, against the East, and anybody right. else that thinks they can come to Africa and, and exploit us. They can no longer walk all over uh, and, us and, anymore. And now, the reason I have played for you those clips is to really examine the relationship between EU and Africa. What is the kind of relationship that EU and Africa should keep? Because as we have always said in this channel, we as Africans need to really have space in the global decision-making table. Because if you understand, much of the activities that happen in the global stage are always controlled by the Western countries. But Africa in itself is not fully represented or is not really engaged in meaningful activities. For instance, you'd realize that the IMF and the World Bank are all aligned to aid Western countries. But when it comes to African countries, they come with imposition of various living conditions and financial conditions that are unbearable and tend to really harm the common man. So what is it that should happen between Africa and the European Union? I like the fact that Margot Parker there is speaking openly about the kind of hypocrisy that EU has demonstrated over the years when it comes to its relations with Africa. In fact, she says that the aid that is always targeted towards Africa is not really aimed at ensuring that Africa grows, but much of it is targeted towards having control of Africa. So what really should happen between EU and Africa? And one thing that we must understand is that trade is a very important aspect because if you look at how our world is formed, no any part of the world has everything that they may need. If you go to Africa, we may have all the resources, we may have all the raw materials, but we still lack the infrastructure to really convert them to finished products. And therefore, we will need to export our raw materials to, let's say, the European world, and then let them be made into finished products and then returned back and sold to us. So while we fight for industrialization of Africa and many other countries as it were, there is need to define the manner in which Africa and the European Union engages. How is it that this can happen? As we understand it, Africa does not really need aid. But one thing that it needs is having a reasonable trade partner to trade on various grounds that are respectable to each. For instance, right now you would realize that the kind of trade, as Arikana Chiyomboriko has said, that Niger sells its uranium at $0.01 per kilo, but that uranium sold in other countries is close to $200. So you'd realize that Niger is really losing a lot here. But what should happen is that trade should be facilitated so that these countries can have better engagement. That is it from me. Please, if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and also share. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.